It is now my great pleasure to invite to the stage the Premier of South Australia, the Honourable Jay Wetherill, to present on behalf of the South Australian Government. Premier. Well, thank you, Virginia. And uh, can I also acknowledge that we gather today in the traditional lands of the Turbal people? And um, can I also say that I'm just so proud to be here with all of my ministerial, premier, um, and uh, uh, obviously national and uh, state and local leaders as we um, share uh, the importance of this issue, but also share the steps that we're taking to make a difference. And uh, the, the speeches that have been made up to this point have been, have been inspirational. Um, can I start with uh, the, the nature of the challenge? Uh, obviously, it's been described in many and various ways as a, as a national scourge, but just a, a reflection on what it means at the level of the individual, but also what it means uh, for the prosperity of our community. Uh, in our state, something like 8,417 reported occasions of family violence, overwhelmingly violence against women and children. But each of those represents a story um, of uh, great harm, of course, at a, at a basic level to that person. But also it represents uh, a diminution of, of their opportunities. So if, if you reflect on a young person embarking on a life full of fear, that constrains their world. It, it stops them imagining uh, a future for themselves. It, it uh, constrains their creativity uh, and it impairs their relationships. Um, it, so in a, a whole range of ways, it, it damages their well-being. But if you, if you aggregate that as a, as a society, as a community, imagine what that does to uh, the, the, the well-being of our community and the prosperity of our community, our national productivity. So when we're weighing up what we should do about all this, we need to also weigh in the balance the costs. So, I mean, these are some big numbers that, that, that Daniel's been talking about in terms of uh, his investments. But think of, think of the other side of the equation, the costs avoided of, of us actually grappling with this question. I want to deal with, with two basic things. One is uh, just focusing on a few of the measures that we're engaged in in South Australia that I think might, might be illuminating, um, but also this broader question of attitudinal change. Uh, the, the first is a practical measure uh, which is called the South Australian uh, Multi-Agency Protective Surges Service, which brings together under one roof um, essentially a model of services. Um, we've, we've had the, the opportunity to bring together a range of government agencies, South Australian Police, Department of Education, Child Development, South Australian Health, Housing SA and the Department of Corrections. And it's a basically an information sharing exercise. These agencies all have shreds of information as they come in contact with families. Not all of them make sense by themselves, but together they create uh, a picture. And the whole idea is to reduce risk and to act early, so points of early intervention. South Australian Police lead this initiative and so provide a gateway for agencies to raise cases where they may have concerns. So this is before you get to the status of something being a complaint or a, uh, an allegation of harm, but a concern uh, before you get to that point. The critical feature of this, it's all under one roof. So it's called MAPS, so the acronym, but it in sense is a mapping exercise. People do share this in a physical sense and get around a single set of information. It enables information to be brought together from multiple sources, improves communication, and obviously encourages timely action. So MAPS receives daily domestic violence police incident reports and domestic abuse reports for consideration from police. And in our most recent budget, we've allocated an extra $683,000 for specialist non-government domestic violence services to co-locate with MAPS. So this is the next dimension. We had state government services now we're adding to it uh, non-government services to ensure that we can share even a, a broader range of information. It provides for better safety planning for victims of domestic and sexual violence. 
and uh, obviously uh, permits uh, the sharing of information across boundaries which sometimes have been caught up in concerns about privacy. Not real concerns about privacy, but cultural uh, norms that have grown up when agencies simply don't get into the habit of sharing information because there's just no culture of doing that. So that's one of the important things I wanted to draw to your attention. The other is something which uh, arose out of an awful uh, crime back in 2010 at the Adelaide Convention Centre. So in the very heart of our city, a woman named Zara Abrahimzadeh was murdered by a husband in front of 300 people and indeed in front of her children. And uh, her children have since established the Zara Foundation, a body aimed at addressing uh, this, this awful issue. But, and, and the work of that organisation is to provide an economic support for women that uh, need other choices so that they can flee uh, these situations. But one of the uh, things that I wanted to talk about because it arose out of that awful tragedy was, in, was the uh, coroner's inquest analysed the circumstances leading up to Zara's death. And the awful truth about this event it was, it was a celebration of her emerging from essentially the control that her husband had over her. And her husband had a sense of that. And so he struck at that point when she was asserting this sense of independence. This is a very dangerous time for women. But what the coroner's inquest uh, essentially deconstructed was the fact that at various points along the way, uh, her or her family complained. And there wasn't a timely or assertive response by police. These were shreds of information, once again, things that may not have got to the, uh, uh, the, the threshold for a crime or even an order, but um, they, were, they were the red flags which were, and, and they were escalating. And of course, because there was no response, the behaviour continued to escalate. And so this, this becomes a critical issue. The, the early and timely uh, intervention uh, by an authority which demonstrates that somebody is looking uh, at this, at this behaviour, where it can be corrected before it escalates, is, is a critical issue. So we've introduced a thing called a Domestic Violence Response Review. And it essentially is where you complain and you don't feel, or you raise an issue, you don't feel that you're getting the response that you deserve from an agency, you can escalate this in a real-time sense and somebody can intervene and ask questions about the nature of the response you're getting. Because the, the, the learnings in this area are this, the timeliness of the response is absolutely crucial. And as was observed by Daniel before, the the usual processes of the courts, even speedy processes, could be too slow to deal with what what is a, a, an escalating situation. So this is this is an, an important new service, and those two those two relatively new service responses um, are making a big difference. I don't want to uh, touch on a lot of the things that have been said by other people. Every all the contributions that have been made to this point have been first class and we endorse all of them. But I just want to uh, touch on this second area, which is this question of um, the male vision of women in our society. And I think those, I'm so proud that, that as a group we, we agreed to those ads and we agreed to fund them. And frankly, I wish we could escalate or raise their profile. Um, I've seen the ads, but I'd, I'd like them to be more prominent, and I wonder whether we couldn't find a way of, of doing that. I, I, I can't imagine a better set of ads. But um, this is the, this question of the, the role of men. Obviously, male leaders are important, and we'll have an opportunity a little later to express our uh, solidarity uh, with all those that are calling out to male violence to women. Uh, but uh, this is the profound area of change. All these other things are important. They're really trying to protect harm before it escalates or remedy a, a situation once it's happened. But the really big returns are, of course, in this area of attitudinal change. And so I, I believe that this is where we should be focusing as many of our resources as we can gather. Um, it's heartbreaking for me to 
uh, imagine uh, my two daughters being in a situation where their life opportunities are constrained or they could be harmed. And the truth is, it's, they'll be privileged children, but privilege is no uh, protection in this area. We know that it, it crosses all boundaries. So this is, it's obviously deeply personal for me, but it, it, as leaders it should be profoundly uh, important for us. There was a powerful observation made by Anne Summers at a, uh, she came to a Unifem breakfast in Adelaide uh, a few years ago, and she, she talked uh, essentially uh, the question of inequality in relation to women. And she talked about how women had, had essentially won some important gains in relation to fertility rights, control over their own bodies, made some important gains in relation to economic security, of course incomplete, but important gains. But the big unsolved area was this question of violence against women. This represents the massive social justice issue uh, for not only women, but for our country. And uh, I believe uh, it needs to be tackled in that sense and, uh, and head on. I just want to finally add my uh, support to Daniel Andrews' call for some national reform where we can join together for reforms to the uh, family law arrangements, including uh, for the registration of a national database of child protection and family court orders. Of course, I support uh, the special leave arrangements to be part of the uh, national employment standards. In South Australia, we have 15 days of special leave. Uh, plus, um, in addition to existing leave entitlements, plus flexible and safe working arrangements. Uh, all of these things together, if we were to commit ourselves to them, would make a massive difference, not only to each of these women and children who have been affected by this violence, but also add to the sum of well-being uh, of, uh, in our national life. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Premier Weatherall.